It's called Laudato Si, or Praised Be, on the care of our common home. Pope Francis's encyclical on the moral aspects of climate change and protecting the environment. Church leaders say that this is the first time the release of a papal encyclical has been so anticipated. But what exactly is an encyclical? It's the most authoritative teaching document a pope can issue and signifies a high priority issue for the pope. It's usually written for Catholic clergy and lay people, although Pope Francis has said that his encyclical is addressed to everyone, religious or not. Francis is the first pope ever to dedicate an entire encyclical to ecological concerns. Pope Francis challenging world leaders to fight global warming before it's too late. The pontiff telling the UN the world is quickly reaching a point of no return and steps need to be taken to prevent even more damage. Issuing a stark warning, the head of the Catholic Church and sovereign of the Vatican City State has said that the earth will become uninhabitable if there is no concrete action taken on climate change. Di fronte a questo non basta ripetere affermazioni di principio. The harm we are doing to the planet is no longer limited to damages to the climate, water and soil, but now it threatens life itself on Earth. In the face of this, it is not enough to repeat statements of principle that make us feel good, because among other things, we are also interested in the environment. Pope Francis was warmly greeted by participants from an international conference celebrating the third anniversary of his Laudato Si encyclical. Nearly 300 experts from around the world have come to the Vatican to discuss the latest developments in climate change and formulate an urgent response. In his address, the Holy Father expressed his gratitude for their active fight against the culture of indifference. C'è il pericolo reale di lasciare alle generazioni future macerie, deserti e sporcizie. Well, Pope Francis is condemning world leaders, the U.S., for failing to address climate change. The pontiff is challenging countries to commit and meet climate targets to slow climate change. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this channel where we talk about spiritual and biblical matters. Today, we are diving into a topic that's sparking a lot of conversation and debate. Pope Francis, one of the most influential religious leaders in the world, is making headlines not just for his spiritual teachings, but for his passionate stance on climate change. But this has raised a big question. Is Pope Francis focusing too much on saving the planet and not enough on saving souls for God's kingdom? Let's break it down. Pope Francis has made the environment a central part of his papacy. In his 2015 encyclical Laudato Si, he laid out a vision for caring for our common home, urging global leaders to act on climate change and protect the earth. He has spoken at major international conferences, pushed for policies to reduce carbon emissions, and even called out world leaders for their inaction. But here's where it gets interesting. Some critics, including some conservative Catholics, are wondering if the Pope is losing sight of his primary mission, which is bringing souls closer to God. They argue that the Pope's role should be first and foremost about saving souls and preparing people for eternal life in heaven. Climate change, while important, is seen by those critics as a worldly issue not a spiritual one. Since Vatican II, let's mm. say in the 60s, the church has been aiming to be more relevant, yeah, right. more welcoming. So it's, yeah, been, what's the that's problem? Not work. It's, it's not shallow, work. obviously. Shallow and contemptible. You know, it's supposed to be an invitation to the great adventure of life. What's the great adventure of life? Pick up your cross and follow me. Like, that's a hell of an invitation, but that's the invitation. And the church lost faith in that. You think we have to be isn't... relevant. Well, what's more relevant than that? Mm. As soon as you say that you need to be more relevant than that, what you're doing technically is putting something else above that. Well, that's not going to work. Not if the original proposition was correct. And obviously the original proposition is correct. The gateway to paradise is barred by the cherubs who have swords that flame and turn every which way. Well, what does that mean? It means it's hard to get into the club, man. Anything that isn't worthy gets cut and burned away. Well, of course, that's hell, especially if you resist it, really. And there's no sugarcoating that, and that isn't what people want anyways. Young people want an adventure. Why the hell do you think they're so concerned with 
saving the planet, which Pope Francis seems to be on about constantly, when he should be saving souls. That's how you save the planet, not by worshipping Gaia. Do you think Pope Francis puts the emphasis in the wrong places sometimes? Well, I gave you that example. I don't see, for the life of me, what the Catholic Church has to do with climate crisis. Just the formulation is wrong. The priority is wrong. You save the world one person at a time. It, it lacks faith in its own mission. I don't get economic policy from my, from my bishops or my cardinals or from my pope. For some, it's like Occupy Wall Street took over the Vatican. This is just pure Marxism coming out of the mouth of the pope. He has a Marxist background. The Catholic Church has always taught that the salvation of souls is the most important mission. The Bible says in Mark 16 verse 15, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This command is at the heart of Christian ministry. So when a pope whose role is the spiritual guidance of billions spends significant time and energy on climate activism, some feel the church's spiritual mission is being overshadowed. It looks like Pope Francis has, on some level, abandoned the church's spiritual mission. Even though he still talks about prayer, faith, and God's love, but he is prioritizing climate issues, and by doing so, he is shifting his focus away from his ultimate responsibility, which is guiding people towards eternal salvation. A lot of people nowadays are even questioning whether environmentalism is becoming a new form of secular spirituality. The ecological crisis is essentially a spiritual problem. The sin against the environment. The ecological sin. They worry that messages about taking care of the earth are replacing messages about repentance, salvation, and the need for a relationship with Christ. Saving the planet. Assuming he could actually pull it off, then what? Let's say that by the end of his life he had made a real dent in such a massive undertaking. That would be great for sure. But what about the people? What about people's personal well-being after that notable accomplishment? What about their souls? Jesus asked, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? Mark 8 verse 36. What does it profit a man if he saves the whole planet and yet forfeits his soul? There's obviously nothing wrong with wanting to care for the planet and improve the air we breathe, but then what? How is saving the planet going to help you and your soul the moment your body dies? But don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that you stop working on a personal mission, whether it be with the planet, whales, unborn babies, or some other worthy pursuit that highly motivates you into action. I'm simply encouraging you to consider how the Messiah can benefit your soul for eternity. An important question in this regard is simply, do you take the words of Christ seriously? Jesus didn't die for the planet, but for the people. The Lord loves people. He wants everyone to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. And that fact of redemption will always be true whether you personally believe it or not. Many people seem to value the planet more than they value their own souls. They act as if they are never going to leave this planet. Unfortunately, Pope Francis seems to be among these people. When the Bible says that God forgot so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, do you think he was talking about the planet? God loves the world. He loves the people in this world. That's why he sent his son to come and die for the people in this world. As for the planet, God is able to create many more planets that will still take good care of it, but knowing that in the end this planet is not what matters the most. One can say, I want to save the planet so that future generations can enjoy it. Okay, great. But then what? While those folks in the future enjoy the planet, where will you be? And will your existence at that time be enjoyable or terrible? In fact, the Savior told his followers in John 14 verse 2 and 3, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. And while we hear a lot today about global warming, how often do we hear of that other kind of intense warming? You know, the kind that is extremely unpleasant to talk about and yet critically necessary to address. Jesus spoke about the eternal fire of hell on a regular basis. In Matthew 25 verse 41 he says, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. When discussing the persecution of believers, the Lord said, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but, not, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. That's in Matthew 10, verse 28. Jesus regularly warned people about this place of agony where unbelievers would spend eternity. This is what the Pope has to put much of his attention to. But see, this is unpopular. And the Pope wants to be popular. Jesus said, Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. That's in Matthew 7 verse 13 and 14. This is why the Son of God was sent from heaven to die on the cross. Our sins required a perfect sacrifice as payment. In fact, if there was any other way for God to purchase our eternal freedom, do you really think he would have sent his only son to suffer such an agonizing death on the cross? Jesus is absolutely the only path to heaven. Peter said, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Acts 4 verse 12 the Messiah explained it this way, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14 verse 6 And John wrote these words about the Savior, You were slain and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Revelation 5 verse 9 So if saving the planet is your cup of tea, just remember, the planet won't be able to save your soul on Judgment Day. And so the sooner you begin a relationship with your Creator through faith in Christ, the sooner will you be prepared to stand before God as a forgiven sinner. At the end of the day, what does it profit a man to save the planet and yet lose his own soul? But the big, big question is, how do you teach sinners who don't believe in the Creator to care for the planet God created. Why would they even care? Unless, of course, if you tell them that this is all they got, that there is nothing beyond this. We as believers have to care for the planet because God commanded us to take care of it when he created us. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. So it is our duty as faithful stewards to take care of the planet. In as much as we have to take care of our planet, we should not put too much emphasis on this because we know this is temporary and we know what will happen to this planet in the end. In 2 Peter 3 verse 10 to 15, the Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, the heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. The earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about destruction of the heavens by fire. And the elements we met in the heat, but in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom 
that gave that God gave him. This is how it will end, friends. We have to be ready for that faithful day. Is Pope Francis focusing on his mission or has he lost focus on the main and important thing which is to save souls for the kingdom of God? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. See you next time. God bless. Ooh.